One disadvantage of FCSS is there is, a, there is something called as convoy effect. Uh, convoy you know that right, when one person is, when the VIP is going along with him 20-30 uh, cars will be going with him right. And what happens, so the time for which uh, he is passing through some junction, for the entire time everyone else will be blocked that is called as convoy effect right. Now this convoy effect is severe in this uh, FCFS in the sense when a process is having a uh, heavy uh, burst time then all the processes which are after it are going to starve that is also called a starvation or convoy effect. Now let's see how it is possible here. I'll take the you know two cases to uh, to just uh, study them to st study the effect it will give you a clear understanding. See I have three processes and the arrival times are 0, 1, 1 and then 20, 2 and 1 are the burst times right. So let me schedule them first. Now I am assuming that I am going to start the scheduling at time 0. Which one is the first one that, uh, that arrived? The first one that arrived is P1 at time 0. Therefore, I have to schedule P1 and what is the time for this? Uh, the burst time is 20. So it takes 20 units of time to finish T1, P1 if I start from 0, right? And after that, what is that I could schedule? I could schedule, see P2 and P3 are having same arrival times and I told you that the one with the lower process ID is going to get the uh, highest precedence right but then uh, there is no relation between a uh, convoy effect and then process arriving at the same time here it so happened that uh, the process are arriving at same same time but it doesn't have anything to do with the convoy effect convoy effect is independent of that right now so we see we see that p2 and p3 are arriving at the same time therefore which one is the which one should you schedule first the p2 right so i'm going to schedule p2 first fine and what is the what is the burst time? The burst time for P2 is uh, 2 units. Therefore, the total time is 22. Got it. And then P3. P3 will be scheduled. And what is the burst time for P3? It is 1 unit. Therefore, it is 23. So, uh, one thing you should observe is the total schedule if it is going to start at 0. Uh, by the time uh, the schedule ends, this is the schedule begin start time. And this is the schedule end time, right? So the by the time this total schedule, you can add all this, and that should be equal to that. In case if it is starting with zero, and in case if there are no gaps, in case if there are gaps in the middle, it does not hold. Anyway, in this case, the schedule is taking a total time of 23, and even the burst time sum is 23. It happened in such. It happened here because there are no gaps here, which means CPU need not wait for any process because all the processes are av available by the end of one process next one is available by the end of second one next one is available all the time hmm. now let's write everything one is what is completion time so completion time for p1 is 20 p2 is 22 p3 is 23 right then what is turnaround time so i told you that turnaround time is completion time minus arrival time how much is it 20 here, 21 here and 22 here, right? Isn't it? I am just subtracting this one from this one, completion time minus arrival time. And after finding out this turnaround time, you could find out the waiting time. What is waiting time? Waiting time is turnaround time minus burst time. From this one you have to remove this. So which means 0 here and then 19 here and then 21 here, right? This is the waiting time. So how does this convoy effect is here is? If you find out the average waiting time of every process, average waiting time, you have to take all the waiting times and then you, can, you have to divide it with the number of processes, which is 0 plus 19 plus 21 by 3. This is the average waiting time. Now it is nothing but 40 divided by 3. This is the average waiting time for this example for this schedule. Now let's do the same uh, same processes in a different order. If the arrival times are different in such a way that see this here what happened is the one with the largest burst time arrived first that is the P1 got scheduled first. Now if the same three processes are arriving in such a way that the one with the largest uh, burst time has arrived last which means all the remaining processes have arrived early and this one arrived late. Now, now in this one what happens is I am just drawing the schedule here. So what is the first one that has to be executed? The process with arrival time 0. So we have two choices P2 and P3. Which one should I choose? Obviously P2 because the one with the lesser process ID is going to take the higher precedence. right? Now if it starts at 0, burst time is going to be 2. 
isn't it then uh, what is the next one i have only one choice p3 what is the exit bus time 1 therefore it is going to be 3 understood this why p2 and p3 is both are having the least arrival time and out of them p2 is having the least process id that is the p2 first and then p3 next and obviously the last one is p1 its arrival time is 1 that is why it is the last one right and then its uh, bus time is 20 therefore it is going to be 23 now the same thing write the completion time and everything so if i write the completion time when it is going to complete p1 is going to complete at 23 and p2 is going to complete at 2 and p3 is going to complete at 3 after that you have to write the turn around time so what is turn around time turn around time is completion time minus arrival time how much is this 22 here 2 here and 3 here and then what is the waiting time waiting time is turn around time minus bus time which means these two right then what do we get 22 minus 20 is 2 here 0 here and it is 2 here right isn't it the waiting time for p2 is 0 because it got scheduled immediately and the waiting time for uh, p3 uh, is 2 because it arrived at 0 but it got kind of scheduled at 2 and waiting for p3 is 2 because it arrived at 1 and it got scheduled at 3 right now in this case what is the average waiting time so if i write the average waiting time hmm so it is 4 by 3 4 by 3 is the average waiting time right so here the average waiting time is 40 by 3 here the average waiting time is 4 by 3 which means the processes are not waiting for a long time so whenever you have a you know big process the one with the bus time very high bus time whenever it arrives early that in the initial phase that is going to take a lot of time for it to you know uh, finish so that all, during at uh, the entire time all the other processes are going to stop this is called convoy effect this is the disadvantage of uh, fcfs and so we are going to you know solve this problem by scheduling the processes which are having lower burst times initially that is nothing but shortest job first we shall see it later